The streets of Kakiza are empty now that most of its 40 residents have left. An evacuation delayed, explains the chief. No, we didn't hear about it. We didn't know uh, until we had seen on the TV. An evacuation order was issued for Kakiza on August 17, but people here didn't learn about it that day. That's because their telecommunication system was down. We didn't see no smoke and no fire, so there was no, to us, there was no emergency at the time. Evacuees from Kakiza were expected in Fort Simpson, 320 kilometers away. <laughs> After 24 hours when no one was showing up, the mayor of Fort Providence, an hour's drive to Kakiza, was asked to check what was going on. I drove down and I talked to them and they, uh, and, uh, and they said, well, no one told them they're supposed to evacuate. Turns out the fire had destroyed the fiber optic line that Kakiza relies on for internet, cell service and phone lines. We've basically been, been on our own since and we've been through this before so we know the signs to watch out for and that kind of stuff. The wildfire of 2014 came very close to burning Kakiza to ashes. This one is 14 kilometers away and a handful of residents aren't leaving, including Ryan Moore. <laughs> I'm not going nowhere. He's chosen to stay and to try to protect his community. We're doing some fire breaks here and you know, there's not many people around town. So, you know, we only have limited labor around here. It's a small community, so just do my part. Caroline Wozniak is the territory's finance minister. See, that's what brought us down last Sunday. We didn't have the redundancy. Um, it's something that we continue to push for so that we can find the funding to get there. Northwest Tel, the telecommunications provider, says it's working to restore service to Kakiza. Those who stayed behind are keeping their eyes on the sky. Juanita Taylor, CBC News, Kakiza, Northwest Territories.